Okay, welcome back to the Pages tutorial. We're covering the inspector. And what we're covering now is the third icon to the left in the inspector, which is the wrap inspector. And the wrap inspector covers how the text wraps around objects within the placed within the text. So to demonstrate this, we need to place an object in the text because as you can see, everything here is grayed out. And again, if the if a tool or an option is grayed out, it means something isn't selected correctly or you don't have that option available yet because you don't have either a picture in or you don't have text selected. So just keep in mind, if you don't, if you see it grayed like this here, um, it's trying to tell you that you don't have the option because you don't have the correct thing selected. So I'm going to click inside the text. And for now, um, I'm going to insert a shape. Uh, please don't worry too much about the, the shape uh, we will cover that in a later tutorial. And as you can see here, we have um, a shape placed inside the text. And as I move it around, the text is moving out of the way. And that's because by default, I have the pages selected to drop in images and shapes as floating text, uh, floating objects. And that means the text, the image floats on top of the text and the text moves out of the way. If you change this option to inline, it moves with the text. So it really becomes no different than if I selected um, type here and I drag that to another location. You can see the little insertion bar there and drop it here. Um, that is in line with the rest of the text. And that makes sense because you want your text to be in line. So if I go back to the object and I change it to inline and I move this, if you look carefully, you'll actually see the little insertion bar as I drag this around. If you could, I don't know if we could see that there. I can faintly see it on my computer. There is an insertion bar there. So if I want this object to follow the text around as I change the formatting of the text, um, I want to select inline. So if I go back here and I select, let's say, columns, and um, I'm going to select all of this, and I'm going to change the column, you'll see that the image has jumped around with the text. It didn't float on top of it. As I increase these columns, it's going to move again. You can see there, it's staying with that text. So this is, a, this is something that a lot of people get stuck on when they're trying to create a document, and uh, they're not quite sure why the images are moving around. And most of, the, most of the time, that is because it's the object placement, and it's set as inline rather than floating. In the background, it'll allow the object to go into the background. You can grab the object, move it around. You can still resize the object. Uh, I will remind you that in order to change the size of an object and grab it and move it like this behind the text without selecting the text. Um, okay, great. So as you can see right now, I can't grab the object. If you look here, this has appeared. Gra background objects are selectable. So I check this box and now I can select that background object. But let's say this is a symbol for my classroom or my project and I don't want that selectable. I wanna put it in there. I deselect this and now anything I do over this, it will just have to do with the text. It actually becomes like a watermark on the page. In fact, that's a one way you can create a watermark. So, object causes text wrap. Now this here gives you some options on how the object causes text wrap. I'm gonna have to shrink this down here so we can see how this works. Okay, so in this case, the object, uh, and I gotta bring it out to a floating object too. Okay, in this case, the object causes text wrap around a whole object. If I don't want text to the left or to the right, I will select either one of these icons. You can see now the text on the right has disappeared or the text on the left has disappeared. And this icon allows you to do both sides. Maybe it's gonna make me out to be a liar. Oh, this one here does both sides. And this one here is adjustable. We can actually go in and, and adjust how that is, how that appears. So it will flip to either side depending on, here's the center. If we go just slightly to the right, you'll see it jump over to the other side, or to this side. And that could be helpful depending if you're not sure where you want it to look and how the text is moving around as you're creating your document. In best fit, I, I need to go back to a wrap here all the way around. Best fit, you can see the text is taking the shape of the star here. If I don't want that, I can select this other icon. It will create a box around my object. Sometimes that makes the reading a little bit easier. And also we have the font spacing. We can go ahead and, and increase the font. That will increase the distance the text is in, in points 
from the object that you've placed in. And I do want to point out this also works with images. So you can drop a picture of you in the middle of the text and have the text move around that. Uh, alpha, I'll cover that in an advanced tutorial. So that covers wrapping. Come on back and we'll talk about text.